So in y, <coughs> if we think about what we know, we know the initial y position is 0 because the ball is being thrown from the 0 position. We also know the final y position because the ball, after traveling up, comes back down to the um, 0 position. In terms of velocities, we know the initial velocity in the y direction. And I always like to go this way, looking at what I know about positions, velocities, and accelerations. So the initial velocity in the y direction, then, is this component here of the vector. That's the opposite component from the angle theta. So to get the opposite side, it's a very similar relation, except we use sine theta, because sine theta relates to opposite sides. So that would be v times the sine of theta. Good. And then finally, the acceleration in the y direction is also something that we know in this problem. It's uh, downwards, so it's negative, and the magnitude is uh, the gravitational constant, g. Okay, so now, once again, we have information relating positions and velocities. Um, hmm, positions and velocities. So, um, once again, it looks like this type of a uh, relation would be quite fruitful. We also um, have now some information about time t. So, something that does relate positions, velocity, and time t looks very useful. If I look at the uh, standard set of relations here, another potential option but would prove not to be particularly useful is to look at the um, <coughs> this equation relating velocities and positions. But because we already know something about the time, it looks like the time relation is really the one that we would like to get into. This equation, by the way, if you were to use it, um, is just going to tell you that uh, 0 equals 0. So it's not going to be particularly fruitful in this case. Okay, so then the uh, final relation tells me that y final equals y initial plus the initial y velocity, which is v times sine theta times the time t, uh, minus one half a t squared. So that's minus one half of g times t squared. Now, y final and y initial are both 0, so that's going to make this a um, little easier to solve. And to solve this, notice what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add 1 half gt squared to both sides of the equation. So let me do that because it's getting a little complicated, the algebra. 1 half gt squared then will show up on this side of the equation, and v times sine theta times t ends up on this side of the equation. Um, now let's see what I can do. I can cancel one power of t, which is nice. And if I start to look about what's known and what's unknown, um, here the uh, velocity is unknown. It's what I'm trying to solve for, right? And the time t, though, is also an unknown. So I guess technically I should circle it, right? just like I should circle it over here. We don't know what the time t is yet. But the nice thing is that right now I have two equations in two unknowns. The time is unknown and the velocity is unknown. I'm wanting to solve for the velocity, so I should be able to solve these equations by eliminating the time t. <coughs> mm. So, let's then, um, let's then carry that out. So let me go to the next page because now I'm combining this information. And notice I'm combining the motion in x and y now by a time coincidence because I know that I, what I want is the x position at the time when the ball has hit the ground again and hit the point y equals 0. So now uh, to finally do this substitution, let me start to put in some of the numbers. x final minus x initial, that's 100 meters. <coughs> <clears throat> divided by <clears throat> v times cosine of theta. <clears throat> so now the plan is to substitute this time in there. And when I do that, I'm going to have 1 half g times this quantity. So 
So let me do that. I want to get one half G. <coughs> times that quantity, I'm reading it off my paper, is 100 meters over V times cosine of theta. That was the time T, which I substituted, multiplied by 1 half G, and that should equal V times sine theta. V times sine theta. And now I can solve this. <coughs> mm. for the velocity v. The way to do that is I'll multiply both sides by v. So I'll get v squared on this side. And then I'll divide both sides by sine theta. So there'll be a 1 over sine theta. And if I tidy things up and gather them together, I'm going to see that v squared equals um, g times 100 meters shows up on top and on the bottom I get 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. Now in our particular case because the angle is 45 degrees that gives me an interesting answer because I've got 2 sine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2 and cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2. So I get 2 over 2. The denominator here is just 1. And the final velocity then is the square root of g times 100 meters. If you'd like to know what the typical throwing velocity of a quarterback might be then for such a long throw, you can work out the numbers. That would be the square root of say approximately g is 10 meters per second squared. Just doing this in rough numbers. No one said a real quarterback has an exact range of 100 meters. So that's the square root of 1,000 meters squared per second squared. So when I take the square root, I get meters per second. So I do get a good velocity. And I get the square root of 1,000, which is approximately um, 30 meters per second. So that's the uh, velocity. And I like to put boxes around my kind of final answers. <laughs>